All right, let's take a few minutes and let's, uh, let's wrestle through a conversation about function, the function of Jesus's church. Now, when we talk about function, it's, uh, it's pretty normal that our minds would go to another word, the word form. And, and there's a, a way to kind of think about function and form together. First, let's define function as being uh, the purpose, you know, the purpose of the church. Form is more of how we go about accomplishing that purpose. So when you think function and form, function is the purpose, form is the way in which we go about you know, living out that thing. So uh, a lot of times in our you know, church culture, uh, of, of the, uh, certainly the American church, we, we seem to, to dominate a lot of our conversations with form. You know, people want to know, you know, do they have a children's ministry? Or what's the teaching like on a Sunday? Or what's the, what's the way we organize you know, uh, community or small groups or whatever? And so a lot of conversations uh, rally around form. And there's nothing wrong with that, but there is a caution to be aware of that the New Testament is not uh, dominated by conversations about form. And so uh, what, what dominates the landscape of the New Testament is function. This is what's so important. If you, if you clearly get function nailed down, then form just becomes about a way in which the function can can most effectively uh, you know happen you know what the way it can go about in a way that doesn't damage the function at all but if you flip-flop them and you spend all of your energy on form what can happen is we can develop preferences for how things are done that come at the expense of of the actual purpose of the things. And if we're not careful, the purpose kind of gets drained out and the function sort of loses its way. And now suddenly we're all about a certain form that doesn't accomplish the purpose of the church. Now, this is, this is not new to us. This has happened, you know, even in the New Testament, you see Jesus interact with religious people that have learned to really rally around a form, but that form is relatively empty. And it's empty because they're empty. You know, he calls them, you know, whitewashed tombs. That's what he's saying. Like you've you've learned the form of how you can project yourself, but the function of what it means to be a worshiper of God, you've lost your way, you know? And so we want to dive into this conversation of function because it's very important. So to do this, uh, we have to kind of take a step back for a minute and say, in order to solve the function of the church, we need to sort of tie it into the function of, of any you know, citizen of the kingdom. You know, the kingdom of God sort of gives us some of this purposefulness before we have to assign that to the church. And if the church is functioning by its intended purpose, the purpose of the church will kind of be part and parcel to the function of any citizen in the kingdom. Because remember, the church is just a summation of a bunch of those individuals working together, living together, doing life together. So what's the function of any follower of Jesus in the kingdom of God? Uh, I would argue that it's, that it's to, to bring glory to God, specifically to, to live lives that are devoted to the glory of God. So that every facet of our lives would would point to Him, would would bring glory to Him, you know. And this has a lot to do, of course, with the reality that we we are in an age right now surrounded by people across the world who don't know God, who don't know the love of God, and God wants to receive glory by His name being made clear to all the people, to the entire ends of the earth, is His commission for us. So we find so much of the function of the church, and the reason we aren't just kind of teleported straight into the new kingdom. In a, in, a, in a realm where we don't have tears and loss and death and whatever. The reason we're here, the church, here and now, comprised of all of these individuals, is because we as individuals are commissioned uh, with this, this function, this purpose, to bring glory to God in all that we say and think and do. And in that, not only do we carry our stuff to glorify God, do we kind of say, this is the way I'm going to ride my bike today, the way I'm going to do work today, the way I'm going to, I'm going to bring glory to God. Glory of God will be found in everything I do. Uh, but also we, we, we carry that glory to those who don't know Him, which is, again, so much of the function of the church is to ensure that we are the, the beautiful feet that carry this message and to carry this, this displaying of the kingdom of God to those who, who don't know him. And so that's the function. And so I want you to think about this in a way where 
God is desiring for us, for each individual uh, member of His church, to be to be bringing Him glory, to be to bring Him glory by devoting their lives fully to His glory. Now, this is a way to think about the function of the church. Okay, imagine if you are uh, having a birthday party. Okay, and in your, in your birthday party, uh, here you have two options. You can pick which one you would prefer. Option one, uh, you're going to have this party in a week from now, and there's going to be five. Hundred people. Option one: five hundred people show up at your party, and I mean they are they are just parking all over the the grass. All, I mean, everybody thinks you are the most popular person in the world, you know, because you have five hundred people at your birthday party. But to get those five hundred people there, something had to happen. There was some kind of incentive that had to be given. Uh, it was either that you know some people had to get paid sums of money. Because they didn't really want to be there, you know, and uh, you know they don't want to be there. You know that they would rather be a hundred places than at your party. But to get them there, someone offered them, you know, money and more money and more money until every one of those five hundred people said yes, you know. And and if that didn't work, you know, because there are a few of them, they're like, we got plenty of money. We just we just don't want to be there. We don't really we don't really like that person that much. We got better places to be than their dumb birthday party. And some of them. The, the, the crew that organized this party, they had to resort to saying, you know what, if you're not going to take the hundred bucks to be here, then we're going to burn your house down. You don't come, we're burning your house down. So if gifts didn't provide the incentive, then fear provided the incentive. But for around 500 people, it worked. They, they were uh, eventually talked into, you know, corralled into an event where they were present and they all sang happy birthday to you. And, and that's your option one. A birthday party, 500 people there, but no one wants to be there. You know, option two is this, that your birthday party comes around, but there's going to be five people there. But those five people had lots of other things to do in their lives, but they willingly, joyfully, voluntarily pushed aside the busyness of their lives to be fully present with you. And, and when, they, when they show up, there's no incentive other than you. Like, they are for you. Both parties last two hours, but one of them, two hours of 500 people that you, that you just kind of wonder, you know, <laughs> what's, what, what, to what degree do they not want to be here? The other party lasts five hour, or two hours, but it's got five people in it that are just laughing it up, that are joyful, that really enjoy time with you, and you enjoy time with them, and everybody's fully present. Now, which one of those two would be the most exciting birthday party for you? 500 people that are there in their physical bodies, but they don't, they don't want to be there. They don't like you. And then, or five people that are there fully because they're, they're there for you. They love you. If you picked the second one, right, then you're probably thinking more along the lines of how God seems to receive glory. He doesn't want just attendance, right? He's not looking for just crowds of people to you know, chant his name for a few minutes and then go about their business. God wants lives that are fully devoted to his glory. And that's how he receives glory, is seeing people that are completely handed over to who he is. If you remember, this was kind of the debate between Satan and God in the book of Job. That was the whole deal. I mean, Job was coming to God, uh, I'm sorry, Satan was coming to God and saying, you know, hey, you know, people aren't really following you because of you. They're following you because of the good things you give them. And God was like, hmm. Have you considered my servant Job? And then as, as Satan like tore down little bits and pieces of Job, we find that Job doesn't give up on God, that Job really wants to be at the party of glorifying God. And that receives, that gives God so much glory to receive. And he's able to talk about that with Job at the end, that, that, that this idea of God wanting people to be fully devoted to him. Throughout the scriptures, you'll see this consistently, that that's the heart of God, to have people that are set aside in all manners for Him, that are living lives completely devoted to Him, because that's where life is found for us, right? It's not just like we're just getting the raw end of the deal here. I mean, we were designed to give God glory, and we live by our design, life becomes, you know, to the fullest. So this is the idea. This is what it means to think about the function of the church. The function of the church is to be a people for God, these spiritual families that, that are missionary forces. And, and the, the idea is that as you live in this way, the function of all this, the purpose of all this, is that we would bring glory to God. 
But that can happen just by attendance or just by you know membership into an organization. This happens because individuals decide on their own to say everything, everything, everything of my life points to the glory of God. But to do this, see, to do this, you're going to have to be equipped into it. And so this is so much of the ebb and the flow of the New Testament. Is as, as that function exists, as this purpose exists, there are kind of two kinds of people. There are people in the church being equipped into this function, and then there are people who are living as equipped saints within this function. But both people are aimed at this concept of, of increasingly giving themselves over to lives devoted to the glory of God. And this is the function of the church. This is why we exist, to find all kinds of new creative spaces and consistently live our lives from top to bottom, all throughout, our mind, our heart, our soul, and our strength, all devoted to the glory of God. Mm -hmm.